we got again we got those poll questions out there man hey you know we want to know your opinions thank you for all that's uh that's you know typing in the chat so next doc we are going to look at the all-time defense for the tennessee Titans, man so um you know looking at you know our defense as well too man we got guys that we want to discuss man so we're gonna look at our all-time defense all right so Jacques, mm -hmm. i'm gonna start with you on this one man all right mm -hmm. so we're gonna look at our defensive linemen we're gonna go we're gonna go two defensive ends and two defensive tackles all right we're gonna go we're gonna go in that route two dns two tackles all right first Let's go. Let's go two DNs first. So, who would be your two defensive ends that you have on our defense? Man, let's two, two DNs. Let me see, man. And again, I went down a rabbit hole <laughs> of just seeing this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go each team. I'm going Oilers, and then I'm gonna go the Titans. So, I'm gonna go. Oh, this guy named Elvin. I think it's Beth Bethia. Betha. Elvin Bethia. 1968 to 1983. This. Yeah, Bethia. This but they, yes, his stats, man. This man has 105 sacks, yep. eight time Pro Bowler, dog. Yep, eight time Pro Bowler. Okay, then listen to what I said. He played from 68 to 83. I'll walk off yep. on that. Yep, my next, we all know who he is. They call him the freak, Javon Kirsch, man. The freak, the freak came in his rookie year acting a fool, man. He acted a plum fool. 22 yep. fourth fumbles, 52 sacks in his total career. But I think he registered his, his rookie year. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was like 13 or 14 sacks, something crazy. Yep, 13 and a half. Yep, 13 yep. sacks. Yep. It was 13 sacks. He came in, man, and he came from Florida. The freak was insane, man. Insane. Yeah, man. Like, just crazy. And so, and if I got to give honorable mentions, man, uh, uh, Kyle Vandenbosch. He was part of that 2018 that was beasting as well. So that's for me. What about you, Hawk? So, Jacques, facts, no paper, man. So, looking at defensive end, I mean, I, Javon Curse is, is, to me, easy, right? That's 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 easy. J Javon Curse, for sure, had one of the best rookie seasons in NFL history. And not just that, man. I mean, Javon Curse had a very productive NFL career. I mean, even his short stint, even with the Eagles, especially the first year he was with Philadelphia, Javon Curse had a hell of a season. So, and then... What people don't realize is even when the Baltimore Ravens won the Super Bowl in 2000, people think that they had the best defense in the league. The Titans were ranked number one in the league on defense. I'm not taking nothing away from Baltimore's defense. Their defense was unbelievable. But a big reason why is because you had Javon Curse, you had Henry Ford. You had, man, our defense was unbelievable at that time. So Javon Curse is definitely my left end on this defense. And to the right side, I'm going the same thing. Elvin Bethea. You look at a guy, not only the number of sacks that he had, the years he played, he had eight Pro Bowl selections. This guy's a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? He, he made it to the Hall of Fame. I mean, so, you know, that lets you know, right? Dude was a beast, man. And, you know, I was a little too young to know. I wasn't born in the 60s, of course. Um, and this guy was, you know, in the 70s. He played er in the early 70s and played in the late 80s when I was really, really a, a baby. But this right. guy here, Evan Bethea, was unbelievable, man. I've seen, I've, you know, I've seen tapes in the past about this guy. So I'm going Javon Curse and Elvin Bethea. For those that don't know about Elvin Bethea, man, hey, check him hey, out, man. He was a beast for the Houston Oilers, man, for sure. Absolutely. So, all right, so I'm going to go defensive tackle. I'm going to go my two tackles here, man. Hey, appreciate everybody in the chat. So the one tackle I'm going, man, is that I remember this guy with the Oilers, is Ray Childress. Do you guys, I don't know if you, any of y'all remember Ray Childress back in the 80s. Uh, tall guy, wore 79. Ray Childress was a beast, okay? In his career with the Titans, 76 sacks I mean, at defensive tackle, I mean, right? Oilers. At tackle, Ray Childress was a problem, man. And you know, one thing he he kind of Cal Vandenbosch played very similar to Ray Ch uh, Ray Childress. They kind of mm -hmm. have the same type of play. Ray Childress was crazy, man. Uh, Ray Childress definitely for sure would be my defensive tackle. And my other guy for maybe three years in a row was the best defensive tackle in the league, and that's Albert Hainsworth. I'm going with Big Al. You know, Big Al ended up going to the Reds, uh, the the Commanders, and also to the Patriots, and his career fell off. But with the Titans, oh, my gosh, Albert Hainsworth was incredible. Albert Hainsworth was the best D tackle in the league for several years. So those are my two defensive tackles. What about you, Jacques? Man, dog, so that's funny because it's the same, man. Ray, Childress, man, I, I again, I went down a rabbit hole again, and I was like, Jesus Christ. And I think his name is in the stadium. You know, it's a couple it of is. people. Because he's, oh, of course. Childress, man, uh, 
a beast. Again, young Titans fans, if y'all haven't, do your homework on the Oilers, man. You'll see why this franchise is, is a pivotal thing to us, if that makes sense. And then Hainsworth, again, we seen him play at UT. We, we, we knew he was going to be crazy coming into the league. But those three years that, like you said, he was with us, man, he was ruthless, man. He was – he was he is what I wish Jeffrey Simmons would be, if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I wish he would bring that same aggressive, funk, crazy mindset. I remember he stepped on dude. He stepped on his face. <laughs> I mean, his work was crazy, man. But you couldn't stop him. I mean, double team him, couldn't stop him, everything. And, and shout out to Hainsworth, man. We've interviewed him, and we've met Hainsworth, yep. man. He's a good stand-up dude, man, real good dude, man, still in the Nashville area. So shout out to Hainsworth. And there's Absolutely. a bunch of honorable mentions, man, when you think of Jarrell Casey, right? Man, you just, just – Absolutely. Just – Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, yep. we've been kind of fortunate. That's another position that we've been kind of fortunate in. And it's like a gap sometimes that happens. We'll maybe go through a two, three-year gap where we don't have one, and then we get an amazing one, and then go through another two, three-year gap, and we don't have one, and we get an amazing one. So, Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Jacques. So yes, we're going to go on this defense. We're going to go three linebackers. So you got your two in – you got your, your – one inside linebacker, two outside linebackers. Or however, however, however you want to do our linebackers, we're going to go three linebackers here, Jacques. So, bro. who do you have, bro? It's our man. linebackers. So I'm about to go with my boy, Mr. Monday Night, Keith Bullock, man. And, and his, it, it don't, it, it, it's, it writes itself, man. Again, 19 interceptions, 18 sacks. He, he's the, he was the linebacker that, he's the, he was the new age linebacker in our time, if that makes sense, right? He was the first linebacker I see to wear the sleeves. He was one of the first linebackers to really just a playmaking linebacker, a roaming linebacker where he can catch and, 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 and intercept. He was a good coverage linebacker, man. He was actually very missed. Mr. Monday Night, as they call him, um, Keith Woolley. My second one, again, I went down another rabbit hole, man. Uh, Robert Brazili. He played for Robert Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, butchered yep. his bat last night. But, yes, again, 48 sacks, dog. 13 interceptions. 14 – a mountainous Pro Bowl, two-time All-Pro. Man, this is this is insane, man. Defensive Rookie of the Year in 75. My third linebacker is George Webster. Again, another one. <laughs> Three-time Pro Bowler from 67 to 72. Stats are freaking insane. Eight and a half. I mean, those are my linebackers I'm rolling with, especially especially if we build on a roster like that. Again, I approached from from the Titans, and I approached from some from the uh, the the historic Oilers, man. Again, I went down rabbit hole, and again, I wasn't born in the '60s or '70s, but I mean, if you're a football fan, you do homework and you just look at these guys. Hands right. down. Go ahead. What about you, Hulk? So, Jacques, I like I like your picks at linebacker, man. My first linebacker that's getting onto the field is Robert Brazel for sure, uh, aka Doctor Doom. Okay, yeah, you know he went to the uh, he made it to the Hall of Fame and just that was just recently, like a few years ago. Um, you know, uh, Robert Brazel played, uh, you know, played many years with the Oilers. Uh, this guy wore fifty two, looking like Ray Lewis out there. That's how he played on the field. Um, people were scared to run down the middle on Robert Brazel. Uh, Robert Brazel again, Hall of Famer, twenty eighteen. He's absolutely my middle linebacker for this defense. There's no question about that. Shout out to Robert Brazel. My other linebacker, yes, is Mr. Monday Night himself. Keith Bullock, KB53. Like you said, with the arm sleeve, looking like a big DB out there. One thing about Keith Bullock, man, that man made plays for the Titans, dude. You know what I mean? Even years that we had lean defenses, Keith Bullock always showed up and showed out, man. And, you know, when it came to interceptions, big plays, fumbles, Keith Bullock was that dude. Will he get to the Hall of Fame? Probably not, but he will probably make the Hall of Fame for the Titans. I like Keith Bullock. My other linebacker is who is who, who is Swag? What did he tell Deion Sanders? Who are, are you Swag? Who is yeah. Swag? I am the yeah. Swag. I'm Swag. Eddie Robinson, right? Eddie Robinson, yeah. Eddie Robinson, the head coach for Alabama State. Hey, yeah. don't get it twisted. Eddie Robinson was unbelievable for the defense, man. Those years that we were, you know, being the best defense in the league, they went to the Super Bowl in those 90s and early yeah, 2000 teams. You know, and even before then, he set the standard for linebackers in here for the Titans. Eddie Robinson played here for many years. You know, yeah. we had a lot of linebackers that come that come through after him, but I didn't really feel after since then, you know, Keith Bullock, yes. But Eddie Robinson was the dude, man. I mean, yeah. Eddie Robinson played here. He played well for the Jags as well. But Eddie Robinson was a really good linebacker here, man. So I like I like Eddie Robinson for sure. Eddie, 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 I remember Eddie, man. Yeah, yeah. And again, yeah. this is so debatable. 
again, you looking at statistically, man, it's some of this stuff is hard to pick. Yep. It's hard to yep. pick. The Oilers, yep. man. I, I got something to say after this, after we do this, man, about the Oilers, man. Like, okay. seriously. But go right. ahead. All right. So I'm going to start off the next one. So we're going into to the defensive backfield. We're going to our corners. All right. Are y'all ready for this? Okay. We got the poll questions out there as well, too. All right. So we're going two corners here. All right. So I'm going to tell you this for me, man. The, 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 there's one corner without question. I didn't even have to blink to think this one for me, man. And that's that boy Samari Roll, man. All right. Samari Roll was ridiculous here with the Titans, man. Again, Roll played very well with the um the Baltimore Ravens, but man, his what we know him for is for the Tennessee Titans. This is where he made his bread and butter here with the Tennessee Titans, man. Uh, you know, out of Florida State, highly recruited. This guy came to Tennessee, man, was a complete shutdown corner. A big reason our defense did well is because you had Samari Roll in the backfield, uh, you know, playing very well at corner. He always played the number one receiver. And even at times when he would get beat, he was always competing. He was always, he was always there. Samari Roll could actually, you know, he, he could cover anybody. So I really like Samari Roll. On the other side, I'm going to the Houston Oilers. And I remember this guy in the 90s. So we look at corners now, tall, rangy corners. He was that then, okay? We talk about a 6'2", 6'3", corner. That's Chris Dishman. Chris Dishman was a beast for the Oilers. You had him and Daryl Lewis. You had Marcus Robinson. You had a lot of guys back then at that time. But Chris Dishman was CB1 for the Oilers for years. So I really, with Samar Roll and Chris Dishman, two tall corners back there, man, that's covering. Hey, bro, good luck with that, man. So I got Chris Dishman and Samar Roll as my corners. What about you, Jock? That's funny because, again, same thing. Chris Dishman, I went down and wrapped 31 interceptions, dog. That's all I got to say. At corner? Come on, man. And then Samari. Samari, of course. Mr. Roll himself, man, he played, like you said, he played a pivotal role in even that Super Bowl round went on. He was another tall corner. I think he was about 6'1, I believe. Long, rangy corner. He had speed, good man corner. It was hard to throw on him when it when it was time to just look on his side of the field. And he played in in, in a in a time where, yeah, like you said, quarterbacks like Peyton Manning, uh uh, John Elway, quarterback Dan Marino. He played in that era where you they were airing it out. So, man, for me, Samari Rowe. And, again, like you said, he he got his bread and butter with the Titans. Of course, people probably remember him with the Ravens or whatnot. But he started with the Titans, and he did great things with the Titans. So, again, even if you look at his stats, man, it is, it is, it is funny because he has 23 interceptions, right, at, at that CB spot. Now, can we name a, a current Titan, maybe Cortland Finnegan? Who has 14? Jason McCourty, right? Those are honorable yeah. mentions. But yeah. yeah, those are my two. What about uh, yeah? Yeah. Pac if Pac would have played here a lot longer, he would have been up too. there too. Yeah. You talk about ability, right? Pac-Man yeah. might have more ability than all of them. Man, you talk nah. about corner. You know, as far as his career, you yeah. know, his career, even with the Bengals, like Pac, Pac was just gotten too much trouble. So yeah. all right. So Jacques, so we're gonna go with the safeties. All right. We're gonna go free safety and strong safety. So Jacques. Who do you have as your two safeties, man? Man, so I had to go with the, the immaculate Jim Norton. All right, so from 1960 to 1968, 45 interceptions. His youth three-time Pro Bowler. You see his name in the stadium. If you've been to the Titan Stadium, Jim Norton is there. I remember like years and years ago, that's the first thing I know. I'm like, Jim Norton. The guy was amazing back in the day, man, and amazing. And I know you said we free and everything, but I'm also going to have to go with the mayor of Murfreesboro, man. Kevin Byer, dude. Like, yes, sir. What, what else can I say, man? He, to me, franchise. I mean, you have Brian Bishop, you have Marcus Robinson, you have Michael Griffin. But when I think of somebody that has come in and if he would have stayed a little bit longer, he could have, I'm not going to say eclipse it, but kind of hit it with the Jim Norton statistic when it came to interceptions was KB, right? KB. And put me KB. Rookie year, it, it, the that he was he was killing it, man. So that's that's for me. Those are my two. What about you? All right. So for me, man, at my strong safety spot, man. When I looked at everything, I'm going Blaine Bishop as my strong safety, man. Blaine Bishop was a hard nosed safety, played very very well. I'm not sure if he'll make the Hall of Fame, but I'm gonna tell you something, man. He'll make the Hall of Fame here definitely. I think he might. I have to go back and look at that. He might already have. I'm not sure, but. I think he is, huh? I think. Okay. 
Well, he's on Blaine Bishop was unbelievable here and played here for years when we were really good and even years we were not good. He was, he, he was very dependable. Um, didn't miss a lot of a lot of games because of injury. Uh, Blaine Bishop would knock your head off. Blaine Bishop was very underrated. Um, not the tallest safety, but played like he was six four out there. Blaine Bishop played hard out there. Uh, he is absolutely my strong safety. My free safety is Kevin Byard. No question about it. K. Beasy was cold out there. K Kevin Byard was the best free safety in the league for several years, in my opinion. When you talk about being productive, talking about not allowing the deep ball to go down the field, you talk about interceptions. This guy, he, for several years, was leading the league in interceptions as far as this, at the safety position. Like, this guy was always getting about six or seven interceptions a season. And he did that in college. Shout out to my alum, Middle Tennessee State. Kevin Byard was unbelievable at free safety. So, for me, it's Kevin Byard and it's Blaine Bishop. Those are my two safeties for sure for the all-time roster. So, I, again, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. He said, don't forget Ken Houston. He, he was amazing, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I look at Michael Griffin's stats, 25 interceptions. I mean, that's no yep. slouch, right? That's uh, right. Chris Hope. Chris Hope. People, I, I don't think people are, can't forget Chris Hope. Chris Hope was solid, too, right? Yeah, he was. He had 16 INTs. Blaine yeah. Bishop wasn't high in the INT statistical category, but he would knock your head off. Right. <laughs> That's why Absolutely. he was strong, right? Uh, yep. Michael Ranfield, yep. like, this, man. Yep. The, the Lance Schultz, the Bernard Lance Schultz, we've had, yep. yeah, we've had, we've had some good safety. So we've had, and a lot of them wore 31. A lot of these good yep. players like Rob, Cop, Marcus Robinson, Cortland Finnegan, yep. Kevin Byer, Lance Schultz, Bernard Pollard, they all wore 31. 31's got a little something in there. So, yep. all right, there, for sure.